back. I did a post over on my community tab asking you if you had any questions about the accessible kitchen. What is the most important thing to consider when you are designing an accessible kitchen that a non-disabled person wouldn't necessarily think of? Listen to the disabled person, ask them as many questions as you can and don't be shy to ask those questions about how they use their kitchen. Do they do a lot of cooking? Do they use the stove? Do they use the microwave? Do they need a dishwasher find out as much information as you can I knew that I needed access to everything however if I didn't use the stove then I don't really need it on a lowered bench definitely also consider the heights of things and how you're going to navigate the kitchen make sure that the disabled person can reach and use everything they want to reach and use and if they can't reach and use them what solutions are you going to put into place that cupboard over there that we'll, I'll show you in a minute that's got the pull down um, situation and didn't have the pull down situation um, so it wasn't until further down the line that we realised actually I think we're going to need that. Imagine that person or imagine yourself you know if you're trying to work with your kitchen designer I think it's very important to work together and make it a fun experience. Um, imagine you are cooking something so if you are boiling pasta for example on the stove how are you going to get it safely to the sink to drain? I can scooch mine across onto into the sink safely. Um, I can load the dishwasher um, and I think as disabled people, we know how to adapt and we can visualize things like this quite easily. Um, so I didn't find that process too difficult. Who was our kitchen supplier? Our kitchen supplier was Wix and they do not do accessible kitchens, but we made it work and they designed an accessible kitchen for us. We looked at Wren, we looked at Howden's, we looked at Symphony and we looked at Wix. And visit as many kitchen places as possible because you will just get a feeling. I did, however, get a specialist installation company that deal with um, accessible designs. What has become the most unexpected, useful organizational tool? And of course, it's got to be the pull down cupboard. Do you remember seeing the pull down thingy? <laughs> From the cupboard there. Also, another thing that has become unexpectedly awesome is my fridge boxes. <laughs> Speaking of the pull down cupboards, that actually moves on, moves me on to a really interesting question is, why didn't you go for the cupboards that go up and down? And I don't know if you have seen them, but Symphony actually specialize in um, accessible kitchens and they have some really great solutions and they have cupboards that rise and fall um, from the walls which I mean how cool is that obviously that comes with a ridiculous price tag so that is why I didn't go for those but those pull down units in comparison are cheap <laughs> with your accessible workbench which is over here um, did you consider the rise and fall? And again, we did have a plan drawn up with the rise and fall unit. And you know what? I just didn't like the look of it. <laughs> and also it was nearly 2000 pounds. That's before you even added the cooker or whatever to it. And I just thought that actually eats into a lot of the kitchen budget. What is my favorite thing in the kitchen? And oh man. <laughs> That is so hard because like everything just makes me so happy. Um, I would say obviously the best thing is the woad, woad? <laughs> the lowered worktop where I can just glide all under here and it's all open and I think it just looks really sleek. I'm so happy with that and I think that is the best thing. One goes through the videos before I post them as quality control and he has uh, said that I haven't made enough of them about the oven. Awesome this oven, look, at yeah. this high it makes it so much easier for you. And you. Be and, and me, yeah. Because before it was right down here, me on the old back, having to get stuff out and you in the wheelchair having to take out 
something that's got lots of fat in, lifted up, and whoa, hot fat all over you. Now it's just wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. Straight out. Careful. Oh, my chicken gets. I think people seem to be really worried about Sean and Daisy working at the lowered workshop. It's absolutely fine for Daisy. It's the perfect height for her, actually. When someone hasn't got a disability, it's not that bad. But generally, this is how I do it if I'm here cooking. It's like I don't chain Sean to the um, kitchen sink for eight hours a day where he's going to get repetitive strain injury. I'm nearly finished, Jen. He's literally there for five minutes just to bung a few things in the dishwasher or um, do some cooking. Yeah, it's not that bad, actually, at my my stature of just five foot ten, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> With my wonderful tap, it's perfectly placed, perfectly positioned. How did we decide on the height of the lowered work top? <clears throat> now, I have you guys to thank for this, and obviously the amazing building team. So this workbench is on um, an adjustable bracket, which was adjustable at the time it was put on the wall. So what they did was they put the brackets on the wall um, and then they just put um, the bench across, kind of balanced on it safely. So I could play around with it and see what height I liked best. I was thinking I should go a little bit lower, but thanks to you and speaking to you guys on Instagram, it seems like the standard height for an accessible workbench or sink or whatever is 800 mil. I went with that and I'm really glad I didn't go any lower because obviously then it would have been even harder for Sean um, and people standing. But this height is a really great in between height for sure. We consider having an island where I could roll under it and it could be accessible. Um, really with the setup um, and structure of the house, um, it wouldn't have worked out if we wanted to have knocked this area out here it would have been the original back of the house um, and it wouldn't have been structurally sound so we probably would have had to have put an RSJ in and that would have been a lot of work a lot of time a lot of mess and a lot of money will having an accessible kitchen affect the sale of the house um, we actually have no intention to sell this house I think I'm gonna live my dying days out here it definitely won't affect the sale of the house the house um, near us kind of the same kind of house hadn't been touched since the 1970s everything needs to be done to it it still went for over the asking price and people were fighting over it so having an accessible kitchen is definitely not going to ex affect the sale of this house have you lost or gained cupboard space these cupboards are massive they are so much bigger than the original ones um, we have gained so much space we've got so much space we haven't even filled some of it. Must haves and things to avoid. In an accessible kitchen, I would definitely say a must have is a lowered bench or somewhere you can roll under. It's made such a huge, huge difference. Um, and also having the oven at that height is really, really good. Things to avoid, an integrated microwave. They were eye-wateringly expensive. They quoted me 800 pounds. And when you can get a microwave for like 30 pounds from Argos, I was like, no. How did we decide on the color? We love blue. I love blue so, so much. And this kind of blue seems to be really quite popular at the moment. And it was just kind of like a really easy decision, really. Um, but the colour on the wall was actually chosen by a follower on Instagram. Did you make any mistakes? Would I change anything? What would I do differently? <laughs> um, I made a massive mistake and it's going to haunt me for the rest of my living days. When I was working at the original sink before this one was here, I always said to myself, it would be much better to have the draining board on the left because I'm right-handed so I could naturally go that way and I said to myself we definitely need a tap on the left because if you're right-handed you would pick up the kettle with your right hand because that's your strongest one and then you would turn the tap on with your left hand Am I right? Long story short, after being left with the sink for however long, we made the really wrong decision of putting the tap on the right. 
And every time I turn on this tap, which is a fair few times a day, it goes <laughs> and I'm so angry about that. And another thing that is really annoying is we've got the bin here, right? And then we've got our dishwasher here. And when you open the dishwasher, it comes out to about here. So I can't open the bin. It's really annoying because obviously when you're washing up, you're scraping plates like this, and then you want to put them in the dishwasher. But I can't because I've got the dishwasher open and I can't open the bin. That's really annoying. Now we probably could get the um, drawers swapped over by the carpenter, but <laughs> that's gonna cost more money. I've kind of got used to it, but I can still hear the sink laughing at me. <laughs> I would love to know if any of you guys have made any big mistakes when doing an accessible kitchen or anything like that. And I'd love to know as well if you have any advice for doing any sort of accessible build work or kitchens and things. I think that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, so, so thrilled with the kitchen still. I'm like, I'm just oh, so happy. And I'm really glad I could share the whole process with you and also have something to look back um, in years to come and see the whole process and hopefully have helped some people when they're getting an accessible kitchen. Thank you so much for watching. 